How do rural communities level the playing field when it comes to economic development? We'll talk about that on this edition of Tune In. Hi, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Here's your host, Representative Rick Crawford. And we are back for another edition of Tune In. I am your host and your representative, Rick Crawford. Thank you for being with us. As always, we want to talk about today rural development and some of the challenges that we face in rural America and certainly in rural Arkansas and how we can address that. How do we retool our thinking in leveling the playing field, as I mentioned before? For those of us who who live and work in rural America and those of us who love rural America and particularly rural Arkansas, we're always looking for ways that we can, in fact, improve our hometowns and our communities. And, and especially, you know, and when we see these economic downturns that we're facing, and after having been in Congress now six years, um, I've come to the realization that if we want to have a significant impact in these areas, then we're going to have to change the way we think about uh, community and economic development. We'll talk about that just in a minute. But I, I kind of I call this, I think, renewing our thinking infrastructure. Now, we talk about infrastructure investment all the time, but I think there's a there's a thought process that we have to address if we're going to update our economic goals and sort of step into the 21st century economy and how we position rural communities throughout uh, America and certainly throughout Arkansas. When I think about rural development in Arkansas, I think about uh, particularly one individual. Um, I can't find anybody who cares any more about this subject and is any, any better versed uh, he's a Wachita Tiger. He's a former presidential appointee as the director of the Delta Regional Authority. And he just recently hosted a conference in Pine Bluff that talked about the future of the Arkansas Delta. I'm talking about Rex Nelson. Rex, thank you for being with us. Congressman, thank you for having me today. It's a delight to be able to visit with you. You bet. I'm glad we were able to hook this up by phone. And, and uh, I've heard you talk about development in the Delta. You've said that bigger is not always better. Talk about that, what that means to you and how that relates to regional economic development in rural communities? Well, we, of course, are seeing population losses. And it's not just confined to rural areas of Arkansas. It's rural areas all over America. And one reason we are seeing that is because, frankly, our farmers have gotten so dadgum good at what they do. I, I know that uh, you, you talk about this all over the district, but I was visiting at the meeting I remember last summer of the Agricultural Council of Arkansas, and I said, look, one reason that we're losing population in the Delta is that you're so good at row crop farming. What would have taken 200 far, uh, tenant farmers, sharecroppers before World War II, you're now doing with two to three people and record production. So uh, out of success have come some other problems. And, and one of the things that I think we need to change the paradigm a little bit is, is this idea that has typically driven our economic development, which was always bigger is better. We've got to have more jobs. We've got to have more people. That's good if you can do it. Mm -hmm. But the fact is we have a lot of communities in rural America that probably aren't going to get a lot bigger anytime soon. Right. But that doesn't mean that you can't get better. You can improve that quality of life. You can focus on things like public education and health care. So that was kind of the essence of my message at the recent Delta conference that we had at Pine Bluff, and that is that better is better. Bigger is not necessarily better anymore. We've, we've got to get past that idea that it has to be bigger to be better. I appreciate that perspective. And, you know, one of the things that that, that we always have to talk about, invariably it comes up when we visit with folks in, in small towns, mayors and county judges, it, you know, it, it's a money thing. And quite frankly, um, you know, we're $19 trillion in debt. We are We are highly leveraged. The resources aren't available as they used to be. And um, we have some real challenges facing us in how we um, invest uh, from the federal level. And, and then certainly the states are feeling that as well. Um, so how do we create some momentum and some sort of entrepreneurial activity and harness that entrepreneurial spirit? Well, I think entrepreneurial is a key word there. One of the things in the four years that I spent in the George W. Bush administration working for the Delta Regional Authority that frustrated me is so many towns were devoting all of their resources to chasing that big plant that would suddenly bring right. 500 or 700 jobs to town. Mm -hmm. That's great if you can do it, but the chances of landing one of those are, are just enormous. And in so many of these communities, 
these congressmen, their resources would have been so much better spent if they were developing small businesses, if they were focusing on downtown, if they were focusing on their school system. Because you know what? If they had done those things, that child who grew up there and then went off to college and succeeded and maybe lived somewhere else for a few years might have turned around and said, you know, I'm about to start a family. They're doing great things in my hometown. I'm going to go back there and start a business. And he or she might only start with two employees. But, you know, if you get lucky, they might have 20 in 10 years. They might have 200 in 20 years. And I, I think a lot of times that our focus would be a lot better spent in economic development trying to start those small businesses rather than attract that one big home run plant that we're never probably going to attract. As you know, the vast majority of new jobs in this country are created by small businesses, mm -hmm. not large industries. Yeah, yeah, you make a good point there. We've, we've looked at some of the grand slams like a new core, a big river steel, which has made Mississippi County now poised to be the, the largest steel producing county in the nation. But but, you know, we can we can look at instead of the grand slams, just let's get on base. Let's talk about how we can improve the community. And uh, and, and and as you said, we've got some quality of life issues here that we can offer in rural America that you don't get other other places. Um, let me switch gears on you just a little bit. What do you think can be done at the federal level and, and um, how do we create uh, the interaction uh, with our local leaders to help rural Arkansas maintain a standard of living and a quality of life that makes rural Arkansas attractive? You know, one thing that we can do at the federal level, and I, and I know that you and others have worked on this, but uh, we, ha we have got to make sure that we have good broadband internet yeah, access absolutely. in rural areas of America. That's, that's the information highway now of the 21st century. And if you have that, you can do work anywhere. I don't have to be sitting in downtown Little Rock uh, to be doing work. I, you know, I could be in Tyronza or, you know, any rural town in Arkansas. Uh, I could sit in Lepanto and do the very same things <laughs> to communicate with people around the world if I have good broadband. And, yeah. you know, anybody who studies history knows that the effort that we made at the federal government with the REA in the last century to get electricity to rural areas of America, and it really brought the South in particular back up because it allowed us to have air conditioning again. But <laughs> yeah. I think getting broadband internet to rural areas, Congressman, is just as important in this century as getting electricity to those areas were, was in the last century. I think you've been reading my mail. I've been, uh, I've been singing that song now. Uh, as aggressively as I can. We've had a little bit of success on that, but you're absolutely right that I think that's going to be the great equalizer in this global economy to empower rural, uh, rural communities to participate in the global economy. Let me ask you one final question here, Rex, before we let you go. You know, why not the Delta? Why can't we create the same type of growth and momentum we're seeing in other parts of the country right in the Delta? Well, I'm, a, I'm an optimist about the Delta long term, and he, here's why. First of all, I think we're going to achieve that broadband, and people can live that quality of life. They can have that hunting close. They can have that fishing. They can have those hiking areas close and do work and not have to live in the city to do it anymore. The other thing that makes me an optimist is just looking at population figures and looking at what world growth is going to be in the next three to four decades. At the same time, we're seeing the growth. We're seeing more and more people, particularly in China, moving into the middle class and being uh, able to afford better food. So that food for new populations is going to have to be from somewhere. And the thing we've got going for us long term in the Delta that I mentioned at the outset of the interview is we do have some of the very best agricultural producers in the world right here in Arkansas, right in your congressional district. Rex, we're about out of time. I certainly do appreciate you taking out of your day to spend a little time with us to talk about these issues. Thanks so much for joining us. Congressman, thank you. Thanks for all you're doing for us. I appreciate it. Absolutely. That's going to do it for this edition of Tune In. Thanks for joining us. We'll take a look at uh, this week's vote check. Till next time, have a good one.